uh, it, it was nice, I guess, even though I don't really rem remember what was happening. But yeah, it was nice and all that. And then now I had to go through the road of going to crash. Now I had to start going to crash now, you know. And going to crash, uh, I only have like a memory then, there, not, not the entire thing. But according to how my mom puts it, like during one year, one between one and four years, I was actually smart, you know. Like I, I could pick up things very, very much easily, you know, very, very much easily. And she says that the way I used to love school when I was at crash, it's, it's the total opposite of what I think about school right now. And then she doesn't understand <laughs> uh, how it came about, you know, but yeah. So, uh, when I was turning five years, I'm not sure if it was four towards year end or if it was five. I'm not sure I remember, but I, I graduated. Now, graduating simply means that now I'm going to grade one. Now, I went to grade one at this other primary school uh, in, 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 in Tsuetlani. Now, there I have memories there and there, not the entire thing. Uh, first of all, I, I obviously I didn't have school shoes. I didn't have proper shoes for going to school. Uh, I was wearing whatever that I was wearing at that time. A uniform I did have then and there. You know, and then I didn't have a, a school bag, so we were using, uh, you see, testic rice. You see, when you buy testic rice, the one for 10 kg or something, something along those lines, we were using something like that. The designs were a bit different than what they are now, you know. So we were, I was using that to carry, and then obviously, at that time, there are kids at, at school. Who are using nice bags, you know, they're wearing proper shoes, you know. Coming to think of it, yes, coming to think of it, it looks like everybody who was eating life from birth till adulthood, everything now has changed. And then those who were struggling from birth till adulthood, now they're starting to enjoy life, you know. I, I don't understand how this life thing works, you know, because honestly speaking, it's not like it was their fault that their families had money. You, you can't really blame them that they were living life because Lebanon, they were born into a rich family. It's, you know, but it like, it's like all the families that were rich back in the days, now they are poor. And then families which were poor back in the days, now they are rich. It gets very confusing at times, you know. But I guess it's the balance of life, I guess. So along this, if you are still poor right now, just know that someday, some year, only God knows things will change. We just don't know when. But obviously things don't just change. You need to do something about it, you know. You need to do something about it. But yeah. So I started going to primary, you know. So in primary, uh, I that's when I actually started. If if I were to tell you guys that I was actually fat, like really fat, you guys wouldn't believe it, you know. So primary, like immediately when I went to grade one, my grandmother says, now I started gaining weight. Of which when I was born, I was born very healthy. In Limpopo, when we say a baby is healthy, we simply mean that the baby was born fat already, you know? Because when a baby is born as a slender, in Limpopo, we take that as, as if the baby is not healthy. And sometimes it's not, it's not that, it's just the nature of the baby, maybe. So I was a bit chubby when I was born, and then I, I got fat, like from grade one. I mean, I got fat. I was eating uh, a lot. 
of pap and spinach. That's why I don't eat spinach. Even today, I was telling my chef the other day, chef put in spinach and I told him to remove it very nicely and take it back to the pot. I don't eat spinach. Hi, Gab, you know, people. I've been eating spinach from zero years to 21 years. Hi, Gabi. You know, eating nice food is just what I want to do now. I'm tired of spinach. I don't eat spinach. Hi, Gabi. Because I was eating spinach because I didn't have a choice. You know, every day, spinach. Morogo, every day. Hi, hi. Yelena, you guys are lucky. You eat potatoes as chips. We used to eat potatoes as sashebo, as the potato. You see the potato that you see, it used to be meat back in the days. Every day, Monday to Friday, it's potatoes. Then uh, Saturday, Sunday, spinach. And then when there are visitors, that's when you can actually eat chicken. You, you can eat chicken once a month or once every three months. And the chicken that you eat ne, is not really a chicken. It's like a human chicken. You know a human chicken. It's the hardest chicken ever. So we were trained to even know how to chew uh, bones at an early age with small teeth. I, I'm sure I used to break a bone because, you know, chickens in Limpopo, it's like they are Chickens in Limpopo, it's like they are using herbal life products. Like they have muscles. They are tough. It's like they are training. They are not soft like the chickens that you are eating now. So that's what we used. We call it hard body. So you eat hard body. One. That was the best meal ever. And then occasionally we'd eat uh, wild, wild animals like rabbit. A rabbit, you would eat it once a year or once every six months you know and then uh sometimes when things went well you would eat a fish and the fish is not hake the fish is called babor babor you find it in the river you see where this dangerous animal where this dangerous animals stay in the river yeah so they used to get those fishes those black fishes i'm sure i'm sure we were not supposed to eat those things I'm sure Corona started with those things, but we just didn't know that it was Corona because there was no signs uh, which was controlling the universe at that time. We were eating things, people. Now, uh, we, during my, my early, early, early years, uh, grade one, grade two, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was abused. You know, I was abused, uh, abused by the atmosphere of the society, the atmosphere of the, of the society. I don't know if I was, I brought the abuse onto myself or not, but here is how I used to be. In my life, I used to, to be interested in hanging around cool kids, you know, hanging around cool kids, meaning that. Those kids, by Lenghore, I know they come from uh, well-balanced families. I used to want to hang out with them, right? Meaning that Vela from grade one when I went to primary, most of my friends were from good families. Their parents were working nice. They had cars in their families. So it was only me who was actually poor, you know? And you know what that means? Now, it simply means that when they want to abuse, you are the first person they will start with because you, 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 you got nothing. You got nothing and all that, you know, but it's fine. So I was being abused in a sense, Ahore. I was the most mocked child ever. Uh, whenever they want to test anything, whether it's testing if a... A, a, a playful gun is working they would test it on me got anything illegal or anything bad they would use me whenever they want to send someone to buy food they would send me right and at that time it's only now that i realized oh, actually this was abuse and my son is not going to go through that shit i want my son to go to school with a bentley 
so that nobody's going to 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 take him for granted you know and at that time i was happy i was what we call an ice boy you see those ice boys uh, yeah your boyfriends your boyfriend some of you boys are ice boys your your rich friends are sending you to buy ice a little bit of thing so i was an ice boy now that's just how i got to develop this unique character this unique character of having to humble myself to get what i want i want you i want you guys to understand i used to go through that because i told myself that i'm gonna humble myself literally i would do each and everything anybody would ask me to do just for the sake of me getting what i want meaning that i actually didn't have pride i took pride and i put it aside and then i guess that was part of my 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 nature i guess you know fine now there was a time uh, when i was doing grade two when i was doing grade two there was a time in primary whereby this rich kids that that are that uh, i was hanging around with remember i was the only one who was poor amongst the group i don't remember but i think there were like four or five of them i was the only one so this other time they took me and i was, i remember they they said i actually i was hungry you know this other one had apple right and then he said if i want the apple i must do whatever they want me to do you know and i was really hungry at that time you know because i never really got um a what you call caring money you know a caring money it's the money that they give you when you go to school i never really had that in my life well maybe at least until when i went to high school yeah things were starting to be a bit better so they said that if i want the apple i must actually get naked in front of the whole class but here is how it happened there were you know during break time during break time uh, all the boys would leave the class and only girls would eat in, inside the class because after eating girls have a, a, a a, a habit of cleaning up after their mess unlike us right now we don't clean up after our mess that's why we were not allowed to to eat in class you know so they said let's go to the class where it's filled with girls and then you must get naked in front of them so that they can see your dick then after they've seen your dick then you can have the able you see i know this might mean nothing to you or it might seem stupid but i calculated it i was like okay uh, if i get naked in front of these girls they will laugh at me but i'm hungry at the same time what should i do i'm like you know what i'm gonna swallow my pride and be an ice boy then i did as they wanted you know I, I i got naked in front of the class and girls laughed at me luckily uh, there were no phones luckily you know and then after i i got naked they laughed at me and all that and then they gave me the apple and then i ate you know i ate and then i got what i wanted you know which coming to think of it now it's funny the truth that's just the truth guys you can't have pride when you're broke you can't have pride when you're poor i'm going to repeat you can't really have pride when you're broke or you can't really have pride when you're poor sometimes you must know that you are being abused but for the sake of you having to get what you want sometimes you just have to put that pride aside you know because honestly speaking 
people can only help you if they benefit. Now, if you want help from someone else, even me personally, if you come to me and say, coach, help me, I'm going to ask you, what will I get? If I'm not getting anything, then I'm not going to help you. But if you say, coach, help me, I'm going to wash your car. You know, even though you have pride, you can't watch a car. You have pride, but so that you can... Get, so if, you, if, if washing my car simply means you're going to get what you want, let it be. I mean, what's the use of having pride while you are poor? Where else you could swallow that pride for a certain period of time to get what you want. Once you get what you want, all those people who made you do these things... They will shit on themselves. Just like they are shitting on themselves right now as we speak. Some of them, they, they don't even have uh, the, the nerve to greet me. When they see me coming, they run. Because they know how they used to treat me. That's just life. That's the best revenge ever. You know? So, yeah, I... I... I I ate the apple and life continued. Now, problem was that at that time, I was starting to be a laughing stock in school. You know, people used to laugh at me that I'm that guy who got naked in front of girls. My dick is small, you know, such things. They damage your confidence as a kid and it's regarded as emotional abuse. And I didn't have a brother because I was the only son to my mom. And I couldn't report it to anyone. So I just kept it inside me for the longest time ever. So from grade two, I was praying that, God, please take me out of the school. Like I wanted a new school because of that, you know. And other things which I forgot. Oh, I remember this other incident. This other incident, uh, there was a Jojo. A, you know, a Jojo tank behind the school. A Jojo tank behind the school. So the Jojo tanks, they are always opened on top. So a, a bat fell inside. You know, a bat. A bat, that thing which witches use. Uh, there's a bat, a bat, and there's this other one with big eyes. You know, we call it Liribishi in, 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 our, in our culture. I don't know what you call it in English. But yeah, that thing f has fallen inside the Jojo tank. And the same group of boys or friends that I used to hang around with, uh, they made me drink the water. You know? Yeah, it's an owl. Thank you. Thank you, guys. An owl fallen inside. And they made me drink the water. You know? And I drank the water, people. And after that, they would tell the whole school about it. I'm, I'm that stupid guy. So I, was, I, was, I couldn't defend myself. You know, you know when you're poor, ne? when you're poor, already you undermine yourself personally. You don't even wait for people to undermine you. When you're poor, you just undermine yourself. So I was at that stage whereby, you know what, no mayini, even if they say I must shit in public for me to get food or to get whatever you know i would do it and not everybody is like me let's understand that let not everybody is like it's like me some will say i'm stupid okay it's fine i'm stupid but look at where i am today so i i would like to believe that i was actually being trained i was actually being trained you know, from an early age, these little things, you know, which were, were, were happening, you know, I was being trained. So that's why I once said that if you wish to be me and we agree that I'm going to give you my life for a day, most of you guys wouldn't handle it, you know. Now, uh, two years down the line, two years after when I, I went to grade, I think it was around grade four. So my mom... Uh, that was just around around about 2000 and I think it was 2006 if I'm not mistaken. So my mom got a job. Ne? 
my mom got a job and she got a job uh, as a teacher she didn't even qualify to 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 become a teacher or to teach whatsoever it was just luck you know it was just luck so she got a job however the job was not paying well but there was one good thing that i loved about my mom's new job it was that because where she was teaching it was a primary school a, a private primary school they actually say that if you are a teacher there you are allowed to bring at least a maximum of two children to study at the school for as long as it's your own children and therefore they will not pay school fees you know then my mom told me that uh, she got a job and she's going to be teaching at some school and so forth and she wants me to move from public school to primary school and i was super excited she was worried that i was not going to be happy uh, because uh, because of the agariana when she sees me she hears me talking about these friends every day i'm playing with them she doesn't know what these friends make me do behind closed doors just because my family is not well respected in the hood or the community whatsoever you know so she was actually she actually thought that i was not gonna be happy because of the bond that i have with friends and then when she told me i was fucking happy i was happy because now i'm gonna move to a private school new friends now those people at the private school they don't know my life they don't know that i used to drink bad water or get naked in front of uh, girls in the class just to get able because i was hungry at that time and all that you know well,